a couple climate masters. I thought it was going to be that one over there. But he says it's this one. That one there, but it seems to be running. So, let's see what's going on with it. <clears throat> that one over there is not running. This one is. Y2. It's doing its job. So I was making some funny noises here. Oh, that's just a piece of paper rattling over here. Let's see. This discharge line is hot. There's nothing wrong with this one. This one's running. This one feeds the back part of the house back there. I don't think there's any problems with this one, to be honest with you. Let me check the heat of rejection real quick. See what she'd be doing here. Find time for my meters to fail, huh? Sixty-nine entering. I don't see any problem there. Of course, it should be colder coming out. Let's see what it's doing. Sixty-nine, fifty-nine. that's 10 degrees, so that's, yeah, there's nothing wrong with this one. This seems to be doing all right. Let me go check the, uh, let's go check out the ductwork here. Let's see what this spider web alusa See what our leaving air temperature is here. Sixty-five, sixty-seven, sixty-eight, sixty-nine, seventy, seventy-two, seventy-three, seventy-four, seventy-five. I don't think there's nothing wrong with this one. Four ten A refrigerant pressures. What do you guys think? You got three hundred and fifty head. You got a 125 degree suction with 65 degree entering air temperature. That evaporator coil should be running at least 100 degrees, in my opinion. <clears throat> yeah, that coil is hot. Got nothing sucked up in the motor. Now the batteries were corroded in the thermostat, so I don't know if that made a difference, but uh, uh yeah, we got 95 degree air blowing out of this thing. 95 coming out. It's like 20, 24 degrees across the coil. And it doesn't get much better than that. Let me make sure you can see that. 71 entering air. <clears throat> and uh, let's take a look at some of his other duct work. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, my pressures, 410A. Um, if I really want to get into it, I can put a clamp meter on it and uh, 
check my superheat. It's up going. It's a little difficult sometimes to get into those, but uh, well, running pressures like that, there's not much you can do about it. He said it's been running pretty crappy. It's been running all day and it hasn't been making temperature, but maybe it's possible that the thermostat was the problem. Um, all my connections seem to be pretty good here. I can take my Y2 off. And you hear the compressor change tunes. So I know the second stage is kicking on and kicking off. 150 degree head pressure. Uh, yeah, I mean, there ain't much to do here. Let me go ahead and uh, where are my tools at? Make sure his flex hasn't been pulled off anywhere. So what we got here? We got a 59 degree, 60 degree, and 42 degree. On a suction. I'll show you how to fill this out for doing the superheat and subcooling. Make sure you can read it. Okay, so suction. We're running at a uh, 130 our saturation is 42 and our line temperature is 61 okay and then the subcooling we need to get that off of the expansion valve which is going to be a very difficult thing to do because of where they put it but let's see if I can manipulate some stuff here now that is between the evaporator and the expansion valve so for liquid line in between coaxial and expansion valve in the cooling mode okay so in the cooling mode it's right here that you want in the heating mode, it's right here that you want. So we're between the evaporator and the expansion valve. So you can see I got the TXV. Um, this comes from the evaporator down into the expansion valve, which is right here. Expansion valve. And we're looking at a. Okay, so we're at 300 and 108 saturation. One oh eight saturation. Our liquid line temperature is still climbing. About, I'm gonna call that 80 degrees. 80 degrees. That's 28. 20, 28 degree subcooling. And then. I mean, she could slightly be a couple ounces low on charge um, 08 minus 80 is 28 degrees of superheat that's not too bad it's probably about where she needs to be running now for subcooling we do our uh, 19 degrees of subcooling I would expect my subcooling to be closer to 12, 13. So I mean, that's not that far off. And we were getting 
71 degree entering air temperature and what was it 95 96 it's a 25 degree Delta T and that's not even doing the water diagnostics that's just the 19 degree superheat 28 degree subcooling told you it was 80 degrees I don't know if you can see that but yeah 80 degrees so 80, 90, 100, plus 30, yeah, 27 degrees. Now I'm going to put a couple ounces of refrigerant in it, but let me go ahead and get my liquid line off here. And I'm going to do a heat of rejection check. Or heat, of, heat of extraction. I want to see how much we're extracting. Because, uh, I figure you guys wanted to learn this stuff. Um, sometimes it's puzzling, and just a couple ounces does make a difference. So, we'll get our pressure. It's an open loop, pump and dump. I'll do the best I can with it here. The camera's a little difficult to work with when it's where it's at. So, yeah, 21, 24, and. 22. So we got 24 and 22. So that's a two pound drop. I don't know the GPM on that. I'm just going to guess 6 to 7 times a 500. And get our delta T. Our delta T, I'll use this this time. Hopefully, I won't pull it, a, pull it apart. And get our temperature difference here. get 68 degree entering water 68 and then this is a TT you can see the model number right here TTH 026 AGC 00L WS serial number K one four four one zero zero four zero. Um, so we got sixty two leaving, sixty two leaving. That's five degrees. So let's calculate that out. Twenty thousand BTUs. This is a twenty six thousand BTU unit. It's six thousand BTUs off, but we have. I'm going to say she just maybe a hair low on refrigerant. Alright, so here's the heat of rejection book. I don't know if you guys can see it, but 60 degrees. With about a 2.5 pound drop, 6 GPM. Gives us heat of extraction. Somewhere in the 20, 22 area.